Ideal, uh, ideal transformers. Ideal something else to physics system. Because all mathematical cases want to deal with the ideal first, but it's a hell of a lot easier. Well, it makes the math easier. Exactly. You don't have to worry about. Again, this is an approximation. We make a little assumption here, so your answer is not really exactly what's supposed to be, but it's going to be in the neighborhood. Why is it an approximation? We make two assumptions. One of them that the wires we're using have zero resistance. The other one that if you look at the coil there, the two coils, the wires here wrapped around, we assume the core flux, which is actually the field. These wires are actually inside the entire field, not just a portion of it. So which means K, the, the factor, the constant factor there, is going to be almost a one there. Remember we talked about K last time to be the mutual inductance divided by the square root of L1 times L2. That's the coefficient of coupling. By That's what K is. K equals or less than or equal to the mutual inductance over the square root of L1, L2. So if this is an ideal, transform, uh, ideal transformer, K is almost a 1 here. Again, in real life, that's not possible. In real life, the wire is not going to have zero resistance, but it's going to be a little bit off, and it really will not change your answers. Now, what does a transformer look like? This is what a transformer, we sort of showed a picture of it. I don't know if you were here, Joe, last time or not. We, we looked at a lot of pictures of transformers, but that's just one picture of a transformer. You get the coil here, and notice N1 is the number of turns on this one, N2 is the number of turns on that end. We get the current going through both ends. That's V1, V2. So for ideal transformer, the picture, when we draw a picture, because there's no way to know if that's ideal or not, but in our book will we'll look like this. And again, the dot here, the dot here, I sub one this way, I sub two is that way, and this is V2, and this is V1. And we have the ratio of N1 to N2. We always give you the ratio of the number of turns. Again, in some books, sometimes they just write 1 to A. They define A as N2 to N1. Then they go the ratio of 1 to A. Notice V1, V2, labeled plus to minus, which means the dot is positive, the dot is positive here. I sub, oh, backward here. I sub 1, I, I put I sub 1, I sub 2 backward. I sub 1, I sub 2, both going into the dot. I label them here, Go both going to the dot. This is 1, that's 2. As I said, we found out there's a relationship between I sub 1 to I sub 2, which equals the negative N2 to N1 in this circuit. So what happens if you make the current going in this way? Well, if you make the current going this way, that current becomes what? Negative I sub 2. So that sign becomes what? Positive. And V1 to V2 is equal to N1 to N2 for a circuit that looks like this. These are actually going to give me two equations by two unknowns. And I'll get the other two equations from doing KVL here and KVL right here. And I'll have four equations by four unknowns, and I have to solve them. That's how we treat these. So let's take an example and see what's going to happen. Do we have an example? Okay. Let's take the circuit. Plus or minus. I'm in phase it actually already. I'm making life easy. 120 angle zero. Volt. 
going through 18 ohm resistor a capacitor of negative 4J and we got V1 right there's the dot this is V1 right here across that inductor ideal and here's the ratio of N1 to N2 is 4 to 1 this coil has four the number of turns that the second coil has and my dot now in this case is right here this is two and this is J1 and notice my V2 is labeled like this different than I'll wait till you finish writing I tried to switch everything around oh I1 is going in thank you that's 18 right this is 18 ohms, yeah. Negative 4J. So if you want it, actually, you can combine them together. Just make it a box here. Instead of having all this mess go, we have a box here. The value is 18 minus 4J because they are in series, right? You can combine them. And this is I sub 1 going in. 4 to 1. Now, before you draw the direction of the current on that one, because the dot is shifted and the direction of current is backwards, can you write it as? The question here for the people on the camera it says, you shifted the direction of the current. And you shift to the dot here. The dot on the previous one on the top. Actually, I'm going to be talking about that. Yeah. So what will happen to V1 to V2? Is it going to be still going to be a plus or a minus? Are we asking? Yeah. Yep. So we're going to be looking at that. Yes. We're going to change them. Actually, you're going to see what will happen. So this is pl two plus one j. So it might be better if you just draw them like this. Done drawing. Um, why is the dot on the outside? Doesn't matter. Uh, which dot? Yeah. Dot. Here? Yeah, I can put it on the side, outside, doesn't make a difference. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. No. Was no. Whatever spot I can find, I just stick them there. Now I'm going to go back to that initial one. I'm going to answer your question now. Tom, yeah. notice here the current was entering the dot mm -hmm. and this current was entering the dot. So the ratio of I1 to I2 was negative N2 to N1. Let's see what's going on here. Current entering the dot, the current entering what? Still entering. The dot. So the ratio of I1 to I2, it's not going to change. Still going to be minus N2 to N1. And that's negative 1 over 4. So that tells me from that equation, if you do cross multiply, I2 equals what? Negative 4 I sub 1. Now let's take the ratio of V1 to V2. Let me go back to this one.
Notice here V1, V2, the polarity, the dot were matching. See the dot here was a plus, the dot is plus. When that's the case, the ratio is N1 to N2. Is that what we have? Oh, the dot is backward here. See, this is plus, but this is what? Minus. Minus. They're not matching. So what will happen here? That becomes negative N1 to N2. When the dots are matching for the voltage, the V1 to V2 is N1 to N2. When they're backward, then it's going to be a negative. So that's going to be a negative N1, which is what? 4 and N2, which is 1. So that tells me V1 equals what? Negative 4 V2. And that's my second equation. Now let me do a KVL right here. This is I sub 1. And this is I sub 2. Let's do a KVL for this loop, a KVL for that loop, and see what will happen. I'm sorry. Yes. V1 over V2 equals negative N1 over N2. Correct. Because of the direction of the Correct. current? Correct. Yeah. Not the direction of the current. The dots, the polarity of the dots. The dots. This is plus, when the, when the dots are matching, when both dots are positive or both are negative, yeah. the ratio will be a positive. When one is plus, one is minus, like this one, it's going to be a negative. And the reason, because to make them matching, you got to flip this, and that becomes what? A negative V2. So that's why you have a negative. What happens if they're both like negative, if they're both attached to negative? Still a positive, because they're both minus a minus. When you divide a negative by a negative, what's the result? Positive. So if both of these attach, like if the minus was here and the plus here, that's still going to be a plus. But once it's plus, the other one is minus, that becomes a negative. So matching, it's always a plus. Opposite, it's always a negative. So now we get that ratio. Let's do KVL for loop one. That's this one. Let's go in this direction. Can you see it on the screen? Yep. Negative what? 120 angle 0 plus 18 minus 4j times the current, which is what? I sub 1 plus V1 is equal to 0 plus that voltage. Clean it. Eighteen minus four J I sub one plus V one equals what? One twenty angle zero. And let's do one for loop two. Let's travel this way. 2 plus 1j times what? I sub 2 minus v2 is equal to 0. 2 plus 1j I sub 2 equals what? v2. Now I'm done. I got four equations by four unknowns. Notice these two equations have four unknowns in them. Where's my other two equations? Right here. Remember these two? Let me put them on this page so I can see them. So do these substitution in, and we should be in good shape. I can make it two equations by two unknowns. So if I plug in V1 here into this one, the top equation becomes what? 18 minus 4J times I sub 1. In place of V1, let me write what? 
negative 4 V2 is equal 120 angle 0. So I took this value, replaced it right here. And now let me take I sub 2 and put it right there. And the other equation, negative 4 times, well, let me just write nice and neat. Let me just leave the negative 4 for now out. I'll clean it in one step. 2 plus 1j times I sub 2, which is negative 4 I sub 1, is equal to V2. If you clean that, negative 8 minus 4j I sub 1 is equal to V2. How many equations by how many unknowns do you have now? Two equations by two unknowns. Can I solve them? I should be able to solve them. I know what V2 is equal to. Plug it in. 18 minus 4J I sub 1 minus 4 times V2. What's V2 equal to? Negative 8 minus 4J I sub 1 equals 120 angle 0. 18 minus 4J I sub 1. This becomes plus 4 times 8, 32 plus 16J I sub 1 is equal 120 angle 0. 18 and 32, 50 plus 12J I sub 1 is equal to 120 angle 0, which means I sub 1 is going to equal, where's my calculator here? One hundred and twenty divided by parentheses fifty comma twelve. Uh, I forgot to change the mode because I played with it last time. Let's go into polar. I like the polar coordinate. I got I sub one to be two point three three angle negative 13.4 or 5 yeah, yeah. Yep. and if I know I sub 1 I can find the rest of them whatever they're looking for because you want to find I sub 2 look right here negative 4 times that number so I sub 2 is negative 4 I sub 1 so take that answer multiply it by negative 4 and it's 9.33 angle 166.5 and you want to find V1 and V2 go ahead V2 equals what? 2 plus 1J times I sub 2 you know what I sub 2 is, we just found it Multiply that by. Oh, it's actually supposed to be the negative 9.33? Well, no, because the minus is 180 degrees. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. 2, 1. V1 or V2 is 20.87. Angle negative 166.9. And if you know V2, can you find V1? V1 is negative 4 V2 times a negative 4, 83.49 angle negative, I mean positive, 13.1. So we found everything we need to find. You ask me any question now about that circuit, I can tell you.
So instead of dealing with the mutual inductance, notice we just do a couple of little equations here. And use substitution. That's why this method is very popular. Again, we make an assumption these coils are good coils, they have zero resistance. The wires, all of them going like tight, wrapped tightly, which means the flux going through all these wires. And if we did really, if we solve it the other way, if we know what the mutual inductance, it's not gonna be much of a difference because we're talking here about K almost 0.9. If you do the math, you can find what M is and do it that way. You get be instead of 83.49, maybe 83.2. I can live with that. So that's how we handle these problems. <laughs> now again, just to remember, if we change polarity on these, I'm done with this example, but if we change directions on these, just to make sure you understand these ratios, let's say I go like this. There's the dot. I'll put it on the inside here, Joe. And let's say we define the current going in this way, I sub 2. V2 here. What's the ratio of V1 to V2 here? Good, N1 to N2 times it. What's the ratio of I sub 1 to I sub 2? Positive or negative? Positive. Because when they both enter the dot, that's a minus. This is backward. This is still entering. Yep. Correct. So this would be a plus here. So that's the only difference between them is if we start playing with these, is the current going this way or is the current going that way? If the current goes this way, when they both enter the dot, if they're both the same direction, entering or leaving the dot, it's always a minus. If one is entering this end, one is entering the other end, is always a plus for the current. Now how could B1 over B2 is uh, N1 over N2? Because the directions. Go ahead, Tom. V1 and V2 are both assigned the same way, positive on top, and the dots are both on top. See the, see the, the, the dot, right. both if positive. The dot was on the bottom, it would be, or Neg if you were measuring V1 or V2 in the opposite direction. Oh, but because they're going in the same direction, yep. Yep. because they're both the same direction, and the dots are the same direction. So if I do this one. Oh, right, 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 right. right. Okay, I see it. I was, it messed me up because one was on the top, one was on the bottom, so it looked like they were going to the same way. Okay, let's put the dot here. I sub 1, I sub 2, V1, V2. V1 to V2, V1, yep, that's negative N1 to N2. And what's I sub 1 to I sub 2? What do we have? It is, this is going from negative, so would it be, They're both entering, so it's going to be negative, and two over negative. They're both entering the dot. When they both enter, it's negative. Yep. So that's how you know if it's positive or negative. A lot of people say, you know what, maybe we should find a way to, like, remember we did transformer? We said when you have mutual inductance here, you have two transformers. 
and we have the mutual inductance, and this is M, and this is L1, this is L2. We said we can replace these with an equivalent circuit. We use the T, which is was easier. We can use the pi tool. It said you can replace them with this and make that L minus, uh, L1 minus M, L2 minus M, and this is M. That's the equivalent of this. Do we have an equivalent that we can replace the circuit? We have something we can do to chop that circuit. So if I have a circuit, and here again could be anything, and I want to chop it here, is there where I can chop the circuit here and replace this by an equivalent value. Equivalent value to the one above? Nope, equivalent of the, all this. Find a circuit that will give me an equivalent of all of this and attach it right here. There might be some modification just to this number. So let's see if we can do the math there. Let's assign current going through this. Um, the dot is here. The dot is here. This is V1. I don't have to redraw that one. And this is V2. Let me define the current going this way, I sub 1. Let me define this current here, I sub 2. If I look this way, can I find Z equivalent? Can you find the equivalent impedance where I can take this circuit out, replace it with, who knows, maybe a bigger load, or a load with some inductor added to it, or something else? Can I find an equivalent to that circuit? Well, before we start even thinking about this, let's write our ratios. What's the ratio of V1 to V2? Positive. A positive N1 to N2. And what's the ratio of I sub 1 to I sub 2? Uh, that would be a positive correct because the current entering the dot, the current not entering the dot, that's backward positive N2 to N1. So these two equations will tell me that V1 equals N1 to N2 times V2, and it tells me I sub 1 equals what? N2 to N1 times I sub 2. Well, if you want to find the Z equivalent here, let's look at that circuit. The Z equivalent, that's impedance right there. Isn't that the voltage using Ohm's law? Isn't that the voltage right here, which is V1 divided by the current going in, which is I sub 1? V equals I times Z, or Z equals V over I. So the impedance looking this way is this voltage divided by the current entering that one. The voltage here is V1, and the current entering is I sub 1. Well, V1 happens to be N1 over N2 times V2. And I sub 1 happens to be what? N2 over N1 times I sub 2. If you do the math, that's N1 over N2 squared times V2 over I sub 2.
Wait a minute. What is V2 divided by I sub 2? Oh, ZL. That's this guy. The impedance here is this voltage across that divided by the current going through it. So that's N1 to N2 squared times ZL. Remember we defined early today that A equals N2 to N1. So if you want to do that, you can write Z equivalent equals ZL over A squared. Because this is 1 over A. So you can take that circuit and replace it now with an equivalent one. Let's see how I'm going to do that. So I could have done that here for that problem we just finished doing. Let's see if we end up with the same answer. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. We did this circuit, right? What is this? We did that circuit. We found V1 and I sub 1. Remember them? Right here. Where are they? V1 and I sub 1. Let's see if I can do this circuit differently if I end up with the same answer. I'm going to replace it with the equivalent value. So this is... Maybe it's the coffee I've been drinking. This I only drank this much. Still full. People see with coffee, like, how much does he drink? Six cups a day? Eight cups a day? Like, you're like my dad, and actually, like, you like, have one cup of coffee, but you only drink, like, a little bit, and then you go and heat it up. So yep. it's like you have, like, six cups. So let's go back to what we had early today. That's the circuit. Remember that one? Let me put it back there. And maybe I'll do this by replacing it by the equivalent value and see if I can solve for V1 I sub 1. So when you say that you're referring to both of those things? I'll show you, David. Yep. Correct. In the neighborhood of each other. Basically, the only thing connecting them is the magnetic field. Mm -hmm. Magnetically coupled. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here, this is I sub 1. This was I sub 2. This was V1 here. What was the circuit we just did here? There's one little difference here. The one we just did here, the one we just did, notice how V2 was. So he, this one we're looking at, the dot is in the bottom here. And this is V2. So what's going to happen here, that the current will be negative, right? Because the current, both currents enter in the dot. See this one? The current here is entering the dot. The current, the current will be negative, so I'll have a negative sign here. And what happens to the voltages here? That's also negative. And when you divide the negative by a negative, what are you going to have? So that really doesn't change anything. You end up with a plus. In this case, we lucked out. No change. Because both will be negative. The current will be negative. And the voltage will be negative. If the voltage was reversed there, then we'll have a negative value in the bottom because one would be a plus, one would be a minus, the result, the net result is negative. But here, this will be negative, this will be negative, and negative over negative, which is positive. 
So I can take this circuit now and say, you know what? Instead of doing what we did before, do this to it. I'm going to chop it here. And this is V1 right here. When I do an arrow there, that means plus on the top, minus on the bottom. And I'm going to replace the circuit by the equivalent value, which is... And that's what? ZL over A squared. What was A for this? What were the ratios? This is 4 to 1. A is N2 to N1. That's 1 over 4. So when you square that, that's what? 116. So 16 times that number, which will make it what? 32 plus 16J. And this is I sub 1. I lost I sub 2, by the way. If you're looking for I sub 2, I can't find it from this circuit. This is V1, this is I sub 1. Now I should be able to solve for I sub 1. I mean, I sub 1, I'm sorry, not I sub, this is I sub 1, not I sub 2. I can solve for I sub 1, use Ohm's law, it's the voltage is 120 angle 0, divided by the sum of them. What's 18 plus 32? 50 plus what? 12J. Let me just take one peek here, by the way. Yep. Watch this. Where was it? Where did you go? Coming up, coming up. 50 plus 12J I sub 1 equals 120. What was I sub 1? 120 divided by 50 plus 12J. So this method, the only thing you have to worry about is just the signs? We well, have to pay attention to the signs. Yeah, it's going to be minus or plus. So now you know what I sub 1 is, which is 2.33 angle negative 13.5. And if you want to find V1, well, you say V1, that's the voltage cross this one, right? So it's I sub 1 times 32 plus 16J. And let's see what that number. 32, oh, parentheses, 32 comma 16 times I sub 1, 2.33 angle negative 13.5 is it 83.36 angle what 13 13.1 I wonder if that's what we got for V1 yep rounding yep 83.49, just rounding, 13.1 degrees. Yeah, Z input is Z looking that way. If they want to find Z input from this end, then once you know what that value add to this number. So it depends from where. So I define my Z equivalent here is looking from this point in that direction. By the way, I can also look backward, try to look this way and find the equivalent of this part. Let's see if our book does that. This is just a summary if you simplify the circuit. If you have a circuit that looks like this,
the one I gave you didn't have a source at the end. What about there's a source at the end? I'll just give you the answer to it. We'll call that Z1. L1, V1, V2, ideal transformer, here we go, there's the line, 1 to N, and you have Z here, Z2, and we'll say we have a source here, source 2. If you decide to chop the circuit, oh, there's I sub 2, where is I sub 2? I'm defining I sub 2 is going this way. And I sub 1 is going this way. Notice the ratio of I sub 1 to I sub 2 will be positive here, right? One is entering the dot, one is not entering the dot, one is leaving the dot. So I sub 1 to I sub 2 will be positive, and V1 to V2 will be positive. What's positive over positive? Positive. So that result will be positive. If I take the circuit and replace it by an equivalent circuit, if I do this, you're going to find out that circuit will turn to look like this. The left half doesn't change. This is V1, which equals what? N times V2. If you do V1 over V2 or N2 over N1, V1 over V2 equals N1 over N2. And we just did the math for this. We found out that impedance is going to be what? Z2 divided by A squared. That's what we just did. Sometimes I use A, sometimes I use N. I don't know. Let's do A. There we go. A, N, whatever. And what happened to the source? If you do the source, you will find out actually the source also get affected if there's a source there. That source becomes Vs2 over A. So this is the equivalent of that what's in the box. This is I sub 1. This is V1. So, and this is for that specific circumstance? Yep. If you have a circuit that looks like this. If you don't have a source, that's a zero. Mm -hmm. That's the previous one. And again, we just got to pay attention to these is it positive or negative. What, what's the story with them? Now, what about if you decide to work it backward? Simplify the front half. I'll give you the result to that too. This is I sub 1, the same circuit. One, two, A, whatever. I just, I should write A, N1 to N2. I hate A. I like N1 to N2, me personally. And we define V2 to be this one. And we define I sub 2 to be this. Again, the ratio of I1 to I sub 2 is going to be positive. The ratio of V1 to V2 is going to be positive. Positive over positive, that's a positive.
Yeah. If I decide to replace the circuit, replace the left side, this side, what's the equivalent going to be? The equivalent, that means the right side is not going to change. This is Vs2. This is Z2. Right here. This is V2. And this is I sub 2. I sub 2 is the current going this way. So the equivalent of that will be instead of dividing by a squared, this will be multiplication by a squared. And instead of dividing this source by a, we're going to multiply it by a. So this box here is the equivalent of that box. So it depends which side you're trying to simplify. You can do either one. Let me just see quickly. I think I have time to squeeze in an example here. Twelve angle zero. Four ohm. Negative three J. struggle throwing that inductor. It's always crooked. This is V1. There's the dot in the bottom now, not on the top. Plus to minus V2. Twelve J four minus to plus on the minus on the top forty eight angle thirty I don't know twenty forty eight angle thirty Are you making this up or is it in the book? That's not our book, no. 40 angle 48 angle 30, yes, not in the book. I'm going to find the equivalent on both sides. I'm going to simplify it this way and that way. What I can do a couple of things quickly, combine these guys as one box and these guys as one box. If you want to, 12 angle 0, 4 minus 3J. plus V1, plus to minus V2, 1 to 2, 12 plus 4J, forty-eight angle 30. And this is I sub 1, I forgot to draw them. And this is I sub 2. And I need to know if it's positive or negative. Let, let me go back to this. Remember that ratio here, that Z equivalent. If I want to simplify the right side here, I want to cut the right side. It's going to be Z equivalent V1 over I sub 1, right? Well, let's look at V1. Uh-oh. These are backward, right? So I'm going to have a minus sign here. 
But also look at eyes. Eyes are what? Both entering the dot. They're going to have a minus sign here. What's a minus over a minus? Positive. Positive. This doesn't change. So it's going to be N1 to N2 squared times ZL. So if I chop it right there, oh, oh. I've got to make sure my pages are not messed up. Okay. If I chop it right there, here's the equivalent. I'm going to first simplify the left side. Oh, all of it. So this will be 12 angle 0. Four minus three J. What was the value? Z L over A squared. Or N one over N two squared Z L. What's N one? One and this is two. 1 over 2 squared ZL, which is what? ZL over 4. So take that number divided by 4. What are you going to have? What's 12 divided by 4? 3. What's 4 divided by 4? 1. 1J, that's an inductor. And let's look at the value there. Now I just got to worry about this one. Hmm. The current going, I define the current going this way. Let's look at the voltages here. The voltage is going to be what? Negative, right? So that's going to make that sign actually flip the sign. So instead of minus to plus, that plus is going to be plus to minus now. And the value is going to be divided by, was it divided by 2? We're not squaring it. Remember that equivalent value? Where was it? Right here. You divide it by A. A is what? 2. Because it's N2 to N1. That's a 2. Take this number divided by 2. What do you have? 24 angle 30. Okay, yeah, that's just a sign. Yes. If not, it would have been negative. Yep. With well, the negative actually, it would be 24 angle negative 150. Because the 1... Minus 180. Right, right. Now, quickly, just to do the left side, if I did the left side, I want to simplify this side. This one stays the same. This one stays the same. The 4J, the 12, cut it here. And now let's look and see what happens here. We're going to have a capacitor. We're going to have an, a resistor, not an inductor, because that's a resistor and a capacitor. This one says it's going to be A squared times Z when you're doing this way. A is N2 to N1. A is, in this case, N2 to N1. So A is N2 to N1, which equal to 2 here. This will be 4 times Z. It's going to be 4 times that number. What is 4 times the 4? 16. 16. What's 4 times 3? Negative 12J. 
And now the voltage we say is going to be backward here, so this will flip, right? Minus the plus. And the equation says we're doing the voltage is A times Vs1. A is 2. 2 times that number. What was that number? 12. Multiply it by 2. That's what? 24 angles here. And this is V2 here. This is I sub 2. This was V1 here. And this is I sub 1. So you can replace this circuit that you see here with this. Or you can replace it with this. But when you do it, this is V2 and the current going through is I sub 2.